Stampede is pure and utter fan service. It's what I thought every One Piece movie was going to be. Every single character that you might have wanted to see will be here. And I mean every single one. Except for Jinbei. Sorry Jinbei. Even when they add, add nothing to the story and have no reason to be here. You think everyone's officially here? Nope. Have even more characters in here. If there is any reason to see this movie, it is for that reason. Everyone's here in a plot where every character is utilized as well as you can with having every character thrown into a movie. So how does this movie manage to tie over a dozen characters together? Simple. There is a party pirate who wants to throw a giant party with a big reward. It's practically like a treasure hunt where there's no rules and anything goes. This by itself is a good hook. It reminds me of Dead End Adventure, except that this all takes place within a single island and we get to see all the canon characters actually compete with each other. You know, instead of uh, whoever this guy is. This time the reward is an actual reward and not a trap. It's an eternal pose to Laugh Tale, which itself is such an interesting reward and it opens up a lot of interesting conversations about Roger and the island itself. With Roger probably hiding the eternal pose to Laugh Tale in order for no one to be able to take a shortcut to it. Either that or very similar to Dead End Adventure uh, might have been a trap. Who knows? Every time I see an eternal pose, I'm going to think it's a trap now because of Dead End Adventure. And while every single pirate we know is trying to get their hands on the Eternal Pose, as if that wasn't enough, we get a buster call on the island, because why not? Just to really elevate the stakes. To me, the concept itself was already solid, but what really elevates it for me is just the sheer amount of moments throughout this entire runtime. Like, every character gets one or two good moments. You like Boa? You get a lot of Boa. You like Kid? There's a lot of Kid. You like Foxy? Well, uh, he doesn't have a lot of positive moments, but like he's in there. And even if you're a Foxy hater, this scene goes hard. In this movie, every character's motives are a bit clouded in mystery. For a long time, we don't really know why Law is doing anything he's doing. We don't really know much of what Crocodile's up to. We don't know what the host of this whole thing is up to. We don't really know why a lot of characters even wanted to compete besides the fact that, yeah, it's a party. But the host, Vesta, is such an interesting character to me because why does he drive himself to make all of these outlandish parties with all sorts of twists? I think what Vesta craves is that thrill of acknowledgement and recognition, one that comes from like acceptance and hatred from the marines and pirates alike. And it's here where Festa is shown to be a character who just wants to be recognized. He plans for giant parties, he organizes a buster call partially on himself, he organizes a giant treasure hunt, he plans to take everyone out who's spectating on screen and off screen. He brought back the old villain from Impel Down. And so I think Festa wants to be recognized for something grand and interesting and terrible and exciting and something that anyone can point to and say, that happened in a way that up till now only Roger was really able to channel. So there is a really interesting quirk in this movie and that's the main villain Bullet. What I find interesting about him is why he was even included in the first place. See everyone joins the island under the precondition that you're going up against others and so everyone from Crocodile to Luffy already plans on being competitive to win. And that is without even knowing what the treasure of the game would be. Everyone's already willing to compete against one another. And I would have been fine seeing everyone duel each other playing a game of catch for the treasure. But this movie instead decided to add Bullet as a main villain. And Bullet acts like a main antagonist in which every other rival can kind of group up against. I think this is the movie's attempt to have a clear beginning, middle, end that without Bullet, you can't easily path out because as soon as Luffy ever got his hands on the treasure or even knew about it once, we know that he would be opposed to it. He would be eternal posed to it. Nope, cut that out. That's dumb. All right, moving on. But an interesting quirk of Bullet is how he isn't really even a villain per se. He's following the rules as much as everyone else, and his motives are nearly as pure as Luffy's. He wants to become the strongest. The only difference is Bullet's ideals as to how to actually achieve that result, with him thinking that the only way to become the strongest is to do it by yourself. An ideology that's challenged by uh, <laughs> everyone essentially ganging up on him. Are his abilities a little bit over the top? Yeah. Is he the most interesting character? For me, not really, even if he is connected to Roger. 
But that's fine. Because to me, a lot of this movie is the sum of its parts. It is seeing everyone in this cast doing anything together, making weird pairings that only really work in this movie. And once Bullet is defeated, we see why Bullet needed to be a part of this story. Because as soon as Luffy got his hands on the Eternal Pose, the game ends and everyone just has to leave. I love this movie, all right? It's a spectacle movie. There's a lot of moments that I could have just pointed at and said, hey, that's cool. Fujitori threw down a giant meteor at Zoro and Mihawk sliced it up. That was cool. The amount of times I went, whoa, you're in here? Again, I'm trying to stop myself from just pointing at something and saying, hey, that was cool. Doing like a weird recap where I just go through scene by scene and be like, that scene, good. That scene, I also thought was cool. I can't do that. Go, uh, bye.